Welcome to the box score. We've got two rounds of playoffs in the books, Murph. Quarterfinal round this week. Uh, very exciting time if your football team is still alive. There's a lot of uh, repeated games this week, too. A lot of teams from the same region playing each other. And uh, the big question is, can can one beat the other one twice in the same year? We'll, we'll see a lot of that this coming Friday night. Definitely, definitely hard to do. I'm not saying it's impossible to do, but it's definitely harder to do. Because a lot of times, Murphy, these two teams battle for the region championship. Yeah, just look at, uh, and I don't mean to single anybody out, but just look at Watertown. What, three or four years in a row? Right. They could beat them during the, beat Trousdale in the regular season, but just couldn't get over that hump in the playoff. And those games were at Watertown. And, right. You know, sometimes that does make a big difference. Let's go ahead and look at our uh, uh, game of the week. Uh, KFC, Taco Bell, and Gordon's on Smithville stats. Smith County, a big win over Fairview, 28-6. Fairview scores with a minute 33 to go. Uh, but uh, rushes and yards, Murphy, I think that tells us, tell the tape. 51 for 327 for the Owls. The last two are minus eight. Uh, and then 28 for 57 for them for, for, for the Yellow Jackets. You look at the passing stats, and obviously they only threw the ball six times, completed two of them. But uh, the old saying, if it's not broke, Right. Don't fix it. And evidently the ground game is still uh, very well oiled in Carthage. The uh, Owls also come up with two big uh, interceptions. The Owls led 21 nothing at halftime, but uh, I guess the only black mark on the game has got awfully emotional uh, at halftime. And in the second half, the Owls did not have a penalty at halftime and wound up eight for 92. Uh, of course, the status of uh, Peyton Hicks is a big question mark this week for the Owls. He went down with a high ankle sprain in the mm -hmm. third quarter. Uh, Murphy, and he does it all for the Owls. He's a great punter. He's a great defender. He runs the ball well. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a big piece of the puzzle if the Owls are going to try to beat East Nashville once again. But on the upside, there's a lot of guys on that Smith County Owl football team that fall into that category, too. Right. They do well on both sides of the ball. They do well on special teams. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it seems like this year, more than I can remember in a long time, uh, if, if somebody's a little subpar, somebody else on the team is a little over par. Right. And uh, they all know it's a team game and uh, do, a, do a great job of filling in the gaps where they're needed. Of course, the Owls did win their 10th straight uh, victory and uh, they improved to 11 and one uh, with the win at home. Of course, the Owls will be at home. We'll talk about the schedule a little bit later. Gonna look at some highlights from the game. Caden Powell opens the Owls scoring with the 56 yard uh, touchdown run and looked like he had another year uh, when he uh, got in the open field. Then Kylan Johnson right before half, the final minute of the half, he, he goes over a Fairview defender and uh, snatches a 24 yard touchdown a reception to give the Owls a 21 nothing lead and then Jay Phillips with an interception for the Owls, some of the highlights from them. Uh, now looking at some uh, individual numbers, Murphy, uh, Caden Powell, the freshman, 49 yards passing, uh, 16 rushes for 128 yards, another touchdown. Bryce Curry, 19 rushes, 94 yards, a touchdown. Jameson Keeley, uh, five rushes for 50 yards, a score, and also a reception for 25 yards. And it just seems like week after week after week. Um, and I guess we, beat the drum too much, but that offensive line for the Owls has had an outstanding year. Not many high school teams, especially at the 3A level, are averaging over 300 pounds along the offensive front. Right. And uh, that, along with the fact that young Mr. Powell uh, is just as much a threat to run the ball as he is to throw it, that's got to create major, major problems for opposing defenses. Owls defense, again, lights out, giving up under 10 points a game. Uh, they give up a late touchdown there. Uh, Mace McCoy uh, had 58 yards, but Murphy, they held them to an entire game. And Fairview, a very explosive offensive team, as you know, under Chris Hughes, to 115 total yards in the game. I know Chris had to be pretty upset over that. I intentionally not called him, because I'm sure he doesn't want to talk about it right now. He's as passionate about his job and his uh, football team as anyone I know, and that had to be disheartening because, what is that, three times now Smith County and Fairview have played right. each and other and the Owls beat them all three times? No, so, no, they won twice. In fact, they ended the Owls season in Carthage 29-14 back in 2012. The Owls did win last year 18-7 before winning this year 28-6. to 
and Fairview, although it's been to the playoffs 22 straight years, Murphy, have never made it past the quarterfinal round. So you, you go back to 2012. I can't remember anything in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Gene Maynard's final game as an Owl head coach. Not 100% sure, but I think that's correct as they <clears throat> beat us uh, at Owl Stadium. Uh, Mason McCoy, 58 yards uh, in, in passes, and then uh, Layden Grant with uh, 30 yards rushing and three receptions for seven yards. But the explosiveness that they usually have, Murphy, the Owls model that up. Yeah, Smith County is just a just a, a a really really good football team in all areas of the ball game. I don't want to jinx them or anything, but uh, uh, Coach Dyer and his staff have done a really good job of keeping those kids focused and and uh, also keeping those kids believing in themselves. Let's go ahead and look at Gordonsville South Pittsburgh. Gordonsville <laughs> goes on the road to South Pitt, gets a big win, 14-7, and. Jay Foster kind of set the uh, tone with an opening 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And Murphy in a close ball game as this was, special teams proved to be the difference. That'll take the wind out of a lot of sails. That pirate ship didn't get a chance to uh, make much racket or, or uh, uh, set off the big gun they have on right. that thing in the end zone. Matthew Albrecht in 70 yards passing, but Murphy, when you look, 24 rushes for 93 yards. Uh, the Tigers also Bryson Greer, I think he was hurt maybe uh, in part of that game. Um, not sure his status for the game at Clay County this week, but 14 carries for 87 yards and the other Gordonsville touchdown. But the Gordonsville ground game is what got it done uh, in the win at South Pitt. I really seriously thought about going to Salina this coming Friday night, but uh, Pretty good haul from here, to, right. from from Reedville to right. Salina, especially. And I guess I'll have to, I'll uh, I'll have to bug the uh, broadcast crew to see how that one's going. Camden Wellington, 10 for 20, 57 yards, uh, 15 rushes for 48 yards. I think he's a Mr. Football finalist. And then uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, five receptions for 48 yards. But Gordel's defense, uh, no scoring in the second half, Murphy. Uh, was the difference in that ball game. Well, I was just going to say, you took the words right out of my mouth. If you hold South Pittsburgh to seven points at their place, right. you're going to win a lot of ball games. I don't know that that's happened very much in the playoffs no. over the years. It'd be interesting to see exactly what that stat is. But when you look now, Gordonsville gets a rematch at Clay County. Smith County gets a rematch at home against East Nashville. It's the quarterfinals, semifinal berth on the line. I don't know that Clay County has ever been to the semifinals. Murphy, I think probably the third round, I would guess, would be the furthest they've ever been. The furthest that Smith County's ever been is the semifinals as well back in 95, 2004, and 2006. So some hallowed ground. Um, of course, the Owls can set uh, or tie the mark for the most wins in a season, which is 12 with a win this Friday night. They could set the all-time record for consecutive wins uh, in a season uh, with 11 if they can get uh, the win on Friday night. So a lot on the line. Of course, Covington and Dyersburg waiting in the wings and uh, either East Nashville or Smith County going to have to travel west a long way to get to uh, either one of those venues. But one, I'm sure that they'll be happy to, to make it. Oh, I get think there. so. I think so. And the one thing that really impressed me about the 1A bracket, uh, it's Gordonsville. In the upper bracket, it's Gordonsville and three teams that Gordonsville has played this season. I don't know that that's ever happened before when one team has played that many other teams in their side of the bracket, but Gordonsville's disposed of Oliver Springs and Cofield both right. and uh, gets a second chance at Clay County this week. Okay, we'll have more of the box score. We'll look at some second round scores and talk about the quarterfinal round of the uh, TWS to play playoffs when we return. As we remind you, you're watching The Mock Score brought to you by Blackwell Realty and the Josh Kirby team on DTC Sports. There's no shortage of real estate companies out there, but there's only one Blackwell Realty and Auction. The Kirby team with Blackwell Realty and Auction has the knowledge and the experience necessary to help you. They understand that real estate sales happen because of the hours of work they put into every sale, whether representing you as the buyer, the seller, or both. Get started today the Kirby way. The Kirby team with Blackwell Realty and Auction. Call them today or visit BlackwellRealtyAndAuction.com. If you're a commercial driver looking for a company to call home, Huff & Puff Trucking is the company for you. Our employees are professional and dedicated individuals that take pride in what they do. 
We offer an outstanding pay package with a dispatch structure that maximizes your home time. To learn more about a company that knows you by name and treats you like family, call us at 1-800-965-5033 or visit our website at huffpufftrucking.com. Two delicious options, two convenient locations. So make the entire family happy with just one stop to KFC Taco Bell. Located at 501 Gordonsville Highway in Gordonsville and 105 East Broad Street in Smithville, we've got you covered at KFC Taco Bell, no matter the food craving. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, get in the car and kick that hunger to the curb with a quick visit to KFC Taco Bell. Located in Gordonsville and Smithville. Stop by today. Neighbors help each other. It's how community works. And it's how we do business at DTC. You can count on us for internet, TV, and phone, backed by local support. For a limited time, get one month free when you add or upgrade your internet package. Enjoy internet speed that can keep up with all you do. DTC, we're working hard to be a good neighbor. Welcome back here to the box score brought to you by Black Bear Royalty and the Josh Kirby team. Terry Collins along with Murphy Fair and Justin Malden always doing the uh, tough job behind the scenes. But uh, Murphy, we're going to look at some uh, Class 1A Sonic of Cartridge scores. Going to start off, uh, kind of let you go down the list. Not a lot of surprises there. No, I don't think so. Those, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I got every one of those games right. The one, that, the one thing up there that surprises me a little is how close Dresden played Fayetteville. But Dresden did beat Westview, right. uh, their in-county rivalry, early arrival, uh, early in the season. So Dres uh, Dresden had a pretty good football team this year. I think they won nine or 10 ball games. So uh, cool. it's gonna be tough. Canning County will be in the same region in all likelihood with Fayetteville next year. So that'll be, uh, we'll get to watch them up close and personal then, won't we? Clay County Whitwell, the margin of that was a lot further than I thought it would be. I thought that would be a closer game. Or... Yeah, and uh, and the same with uh, with McKenzie. I thought uh, Moore County they've had a they've had a really good good season. Chris White, uh, the, the second or third year coach uh, down there in Lynchburg, uh, but that McKenzie team uh, was in the championship game last year, and uh, I think they're the ones that eliminated Fayetteville. You know, Fayetteville's got to have some. Uh, unfinished business to take care of if if they end up winning uh, this week and and take on McKenzie uh, in the semis. Go say I, I was thinking for some reason Fayetteville won it a year ago but I can't I can't remember it, it all runs together. I can remember seeing Wade Comer on the sideline <laughs> with a white shirt and red tie and I thought <laughs> where did that come from but he said he always does that when there's an important football game right. on the line. Let's go ahead and look at the second round games. Of course, quarterfinal action, Auburn Springs at Coldfield, Gordonsville at Clay County, Fayetteville at McKenzie, uh, Peabody at MASE. Uh, Murphy, I, I know, you know, of course, Gordonsville Clay County, the game that we're most involved with, but, uh, you know, Gordonsville sitting there at nine and three, you know, they could make it Chattanooga. I think so. Um, the one that probably folks around here care less about than any is the bottom one there, uh, Peabody and MASC. But last year, MAHS in Memphis had a pretty good run. Not a bad football team at all. They ended up closing that school and Cedric Miller, uh, who was the coach at um, MAHS last year is now the head coach at MASE, and he got to bring some of those kids from that other school with him. So they've, uh, they've put up a lot of points this year and it'll be interesting to see how that. I think Peabody probably wins, but I think MA, it wouldn't surprise me to see MASE in the semis. That favorable McKenzie game, that should be a great ball game. I think so, without a doubt. And obviously, uh, when you look at records, they're both undefeated, uh, both loaded with speed and good coaching, great community support. That'd be a fun place to go, uh, but it's a pretty good little haul from yeah. here <laughs> yeah, over no to doubt. McKenzie. <laughs> Class 2A, Sonic of Carthage scores, Monterey over Hampton, York over South Green, Tyner over Westmoreland, East Robinson over Bledsoe, and Union City, and a close one over Westview. Westview beat Union City three or four touchdowns during the regular season, so Union City must have put up quite a defensive effort uh, in that one. Certainly the quarterback they had last year, uh, they being Westview, is now, uh, now at the University of Alabama. 
but nonetheless, uh, a great defensive effort by Union City in that one. And uh, uh, sets up a game uh, at, at the top there with Monterey and York playing each other. They're not very far apart, but I don't think they've played each other a lot in the past uh, because they were 1A and 3A for the most part. Uh, that'll be a real interesting game. I think Chris Hughes has done a uh, done a really good, or Scott Hughes, excuse me, at Monterey has done a, a really good job up there in the last two or three years. Let's go ahead and look at the Class 2A second round games. Of course, these winners, Murphy, will go to the semis. I don't know that Monterey and York has ever been, at least in my memory, and, and I could be corrected, uh, that Monterey or York has ever made it to the semifinals. Monterey only only won a playoff game for the first time four or five years ago, right. so I think you're probably right in that one. Of course, York won the regular season battle, and that's the reason that they're hosting uh, with that eight and four record is they beat Monterey during the regular season. And Murphy, I think this will be that second game, Tyner at East Robertson. There's a lot of talent on the field right there. No doubt the winner of this game, or the winner of the Tyner East Robertson game, I think has a great chance to get to uh, Chattanooga, and that's nothing against Monterey or York, but just a lot of athletic ability on both those teams. Just a lot of speed and athleticism on both of those teams, uh, certainly more than uh, those two Upper Cumberland teams, Monterey and York Institute, had seen before. Riverside at Lewis County, of course, going down to Hohen Wall, that's always a fun place uh, to play. Bobby Sharp, longtime coach there, Murphy, a good friend of ours, and uh, you know, they have always been a strong playoff team. And they beat Riverside during the regular season, so that's uh, that's another rematch there that uh, I, I think, except for Tyner East Robertson, the other three games are rematches in that one. Union City and Huntington should be a good one out in West oh, Tennessee. Boy, I'll say they're both very well coached and uh, great tradition. They've both won state championships in the past, and uh, it's a shame either one of those has to bow out in the third round. Let's look at the Class 3A Sonic of Carthage scores. Gatlinburg, Pittman, uh, Alcoa, East Nashville, Covington, and Dyersburg winners. East Nashville goes to Waverly and knocks them off. Yeah, that one, uh, I thought Waverly had a shot in that one, but uh, obviously uh, East Nashville has rebounded uh, very well in that and uh, and knocked uh, kind of a sentimental favorite out with Waverly, all the problems they had last year with the flooding and everything over there. Let's look at the quarterfinal matchups. Uh, it's going to be Gatlinburg-Pittman at Alcoa, uh, Sweetwater at Giles County, uh, East Nashville at Smith County, and Dyersburg at Covington. Yeah, Giles County gets a travel award again, having to travel uh, from one end of the state to the other almost. And uh, Sweetwater's got enough talent maybe uh, to uh, to knock off Giles County, but I don't think they'll be able to do so. Uh, but, but I'm sorry, Sweetwater's the one that's got to make the long right. trip. But uh, it'll be interesting. East Nashville and Smith County obviously have played each other, as have GP and Alcoa. And uh, Dyersburg lost to Covington by a rather large margin uh, during the regular season. And I think uh, Coach Bart Stowe is going to probably bow out uh, again this year. Murphy, when you look, Alcoa year in, year out, when Gary Rankin was there, now, of course, under a first year head coach, but a long time assistant coach there, it's hard not to pick them, Murphy, uh, to once again repeat. Especially in the year when they beat Marable. Right. <laughs> That's so, uh, Brian Nix is just, uh, is just a carbon copy of Gary Rankin, though. He does such a good job. Brian was actually at Alcoa longer than Gary was, but as an assistant coach, and he runs that program uh, just like a general runs his, runs his uh, uh, troops. Class 4A, Sonic of Carthage scores. You've got Greenville over Gibbs, Anderson County over Elizabethan, uh, East Hamilton over Upman. East Hamilton scores, goes for two late, Murphy, and get it mm. to end the B season. That's a, that's a tough one there. I hate that one for Adam Kane at Upperman. I really thought that uh, that particular region could have swept in the opening round. It ended up going 50-50. But then Upperman and Stone Memorial both bow out in the second round. Of course, Red Bank uh, lost to Fayetteville, a very good team uh, out of 1A for their first loss of the season. They get the win over Stone Memorial 21-6. Then Pearl Cone big over Hardin County. Setting up the uh, quarterfinal matchups, Greenville at Anderson County and Murphy, that should be a great game. I think so. Uh, that the, Anderson County's nemesis is, has, for the last four or five years, has been either Greenville or Elizabethan. Right. They beat Elizabethan twice this year, once in the regular season and uh, once in the playoffs last week. 
Uh, boy, I was really rooting hard for Anderson County. They've been so close, but Greenville has just annihilated everyone they have played this year, regardless of classification. Red Bank at East Hamilton, Pearl Cone at Lexington, and then Milan and Haywood. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, Greenville, if, if man had to, I guess, say he was going to win it, you would think Greenville, but, you know, Pearl Cone's loaded once again, a lot of talent. Haywood's always got a lot of speed. Uh, but, you know, any of those eight teams, I think, have a chance to get to Chattanooga. I think so. I think Pearl Cone expects to uh, be playing in Chattanooga, but Chris Smith down at Haywood uh, thinks this may be the best team. He's he's the youngest coach in, in that group of eight teams right there uh, and uh, has been to the championship game a couple of times, but always bows out to uh, uh, Pearl Cone or, or Greenville. You know, Greenville and Elizabeth and uh, one of those two teams won four or five state championships in a row out of the same region. But uh, I, I think this might be West Tennessee's turn if you want to count Pearl Cone because they're on the bottom part of the bracket. Uh, we've got some 5A uh, matchups and scores in 6A and also uh, some previews to come up for basketball. Of course, uh, that's getting started this week with Hall of Fame action. We'll have some more. As we return to the box score, brought to you by Black Bear Realty and the Josh Kirby team on DTC3 Sports. There's no shortage of real estate companies out there, but there's only one Blackwell Realty and Auction. The Kirby team with Blackwell Realty and Auction has the knowledge and the experience necessary to help you. They understand that real estate sales happen because of the hours of work they put into every sale, whether representing you as the buyer, the seller, or both. Get started today the Kirby way. The Kirby team with Blackwell Realty and Auction. Call them today or visit BlackwellRealtyAndAuction.com. Opioid overdoses continue to claim lives in Tennessee. Naloxone, an opioid reversal drug, can save lives. Call the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition for a free, quick, and confidential training. Also, if you are struggling with substance use disorder due to your alcohol and drug use, help is only a phone call away. Call the Tennessee Red Line. This project is funded under a grant contract with the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Nearstar Middle Tennessee Mines in Gordonsville is hiring. We have open positions for master, certified, and experienced heavy-duty maintenance techs, maintenance supervisor, entry-level and experienced miners and exploration infill drillers, grade operator, electricians, laboratory, and metallurgical technician, senior metallurgist, and more. We offer competitive wages, excellent benefits, PTO, holiday pay, exceptional 401k, and lots more. Make the most of your future and your career. Join the excellent team at Nearstar Middle Tennessee Mines in Gordonsville. Welcome back here to the box score. We're about halfway home. Murphy Fair along with Terry Collins. We're going to look at some Sonic of Carthage Class 5A scores. Uh, Murphy, uh, the one right off the top. Page over Mount G, a game that was a lot closer uh, than I thought it would be uh, Kudos to Trey Perry and Mount Juliet for going to Page uh, and playing them a close game. Page, I think, and Nolansville may be the two odds-on favorites to win Class 5A. They played during the regular season, both in Williamson County, and uh, Page won that one in overtime. Right. Uh, and now they've got to they've got to do it again. But Charles Rathbone has done a, a great job at Page. Uh, a guy who played his high school ball at William Blunt. That really surprised me when I found that out. I just thought maybe he was a uh, out of state guy or something. But William Blunt right. is almost out of state <laughs> in there up in East Tennessee. Uh, but I went to Nolensville last last week, and uh, White County gave a great effort. But they at the first half it was just nip and tuck back and forth. One team would score, and then the next one, then one, and then the next one. Uh, but White County just ran out of gas, I guess, going down the stretch, but a great year for the Warriors nonetheless. Coach Frazier, uh, a guy who uh, who played at White County, grew up over there and took that job. This is his fourth year 
and has really turned that program around. Of course, they've got one of the Mr. Football finalists that I think has a great chance, and that's nothing against, uh, you know, Mr. Borders at Macon or anybody else. But when you look at Malachi Dow, I think's his name. Correct. Uh, he's just an outstanding player, Murph. And the surprising part is how small he is. But he cuts on a dime better than anyone I've ever seen. And if he sees a gap that's 12 inches wide, he's through it before you can think about it. Right. Uh, he's he's really got great field vision. Henry County, big over Portland, and then Springfield over Mumford. So that sets up for the Class 5A quarterfinals. We've got Daniel Boone and Oxford West, two undefeated teams there. Oak Ridge, a little bit of a surprise, going to Powell, Page at Nolensville. Nolensville won that regular season game, although Page had a one or two score lead in that ball game. Uh, Nolensville comes back, puts it in overtime, and wins the ball game, and then Springfield at Henry County. I think Henry County may be the silent giant in that uh, in that bottom half of the bracket. The teams that they have lost to were both less than seven points. Uh, I just think Henry County's got all of the all of the components it needs, and and uh, on the upper part of the bracket, it's Knoxville West all the way. They beat I think three 6A teams rather handsomely, and uh, they're going to be tough for somebody to deal with in Chattanooga. Let's go ahead and look at uh, the final classification as far as the uh, public school goes, and that's Class 6A. Uh, Maryville over Bearden, Blackman over Coffee County in a close one, Oakland big over Lebanon, Beach over Smyrna, and Cage Ridge over Clarksville. 6A teams will uh, probably have a big party when this season's over. Uh, because of the fact that Beach goes back to 5A. And right. they're going to be very happy to see that. Beach has done extremely well moving up to the 6A. Uh, Anthony Crabtree, a former York Dragon, uh, did his high school uh, playing days in Jamestown, has done a, another really, really good job. Smyrna tried to keep it really close. I listened to the last few minutes of that game, and Smyrna scored with less than 10 seconds to go in the ball game. That game really wasn't quite that close. Uh, but nonetheless, I think uh, I think Rutherford County uh, loses, well, yeah, they will lose one of their teams this week because Blackman goes to Oakland and that one will be pretty one-sided. I think Oakland uh, probably plays Maryville next week in the semis, and I look for Beach and Cane Ridge to face each other in the uh, other semi. Let's go ahead and look at the 6A uh, matchups as far as the quarterfinals go. Sounds Hill at Maryville, Oakland at Blackman, Beach at Cane Ridge, and then Germantown at Bartlett. And, uh, Mr. Woods down at Cane Ridge uh, had another solid year. And he's done really, really well. And the interesting thing about that Germantown Bartlett uh, matchup, Bartlett has two losses this year. One of those was to Germantown. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that one pans out. Definitely will. Let's go ahead and look. Uh, we've got basketball, as we said, starting this week for the Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, Gordonsville's the only uh, school that we've got uh, Murphy teams returning that have. Uh, out of the five that we cover that have the uh, same coaching staff. Jake Dillard returns for his sixth season. Of course, he pulls the big upset of Clark Range in the first round of the district tournament to knock them out. Uh, first time Lamar Rogers has ever lost uh, in the opening round of the uh, district. Most That'd of the time. be, what, the first time in 50 years, right, I guess. Right, right. Right. He's been up there so And long. then Greg Bibb returns for his third season. Uh, Gordonsville lost a lot of people off last year's team, had several seniors on that team. But Greg Bibb returns a lot of pieces uh, for a team that finished third in the district. Uh, but when you look at the teams that they're competing against, uh, as uh, you know, we've got that in a graphic, let's go ahead and roll that to that. Uh, when you look at uh, Clay County and Pickett County, as far as boys go, Murphy, uh, and Red Bowling Springs will be much improved. You know, Clark Range struggled last year, uh, but still, that's two of the top single A teams in the state. And, and that's a year in, year out kind right. of thing. And the Upper Cumberland basketball rules for the most part, and uh, you can pretty much count on, on a single A team from that area. Jackson County's not in that group right there, right. but uh, you can all, almost always count somebody from the Upper Cumberland's gonna be in the state tournament. As far as the girls go, of course, Clark Range in uh, Clay County and Pickett County, uh, Red Bowling had a great year a year ago. Of course, they lost uh, after winning the, the region, lost their coach, and then lost in the sub-state even though it was at home, I say it was at home, it wasn't at Red Bowling, it was in Lafayette at Macon County. 
so, you know, they were a little disappointed after winning the region championship a year ago. Uh, they wound up falling, uh, not getting to the glass house in Murfreesboro. Let's go ahead and look at Cannon County. Uh, of course, we've got uh, Ashley Patrick, former player there. Uh, in her second season, they lost in the region uh, semifinals a year ago to York. And then Jared Nabe, a longtime assistant in his first season uh, over in Woodbury, um, you know, taking over for a guy that has moved on further down the lane, uh, or down the line. Of course, he used to play at Watertown. Uh, and, and when you look at, you know, uh, Cannon County a year ago, upset Smith County uh, in the uh, district championship game. Of course, that was over at Watertown. So, you know, and they've got some key pay, uh, pieces returning. Of course, they're going to have to replace Gus. And uh, Gus Davenport, an outstanding player uh, for Cannon County a year ago. Who's now playing at, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank now. I, I was thinking about it. It's in Nashville. Uh, Trebeca? Trebeca, yeah. yeah. And seems to be, I've talked to his dad a couple of times. Right. And uh, he seems to be enjoying himself down there and uh, could very well get some quality playing time this year. Of course, Russell and I. We played against each other when he played for Cannon County and me for the Owls. Speaking of the Owls, let's go ahead and look at uh, the Lady Owls, of course, under first-year head coach uh, Matt Farrell. Uh, you know, went lost last year 37-17 uh, in the semifinals at Watertown to Westmoreland. Uh, the Owls had a great year a year ago, Trey Sanders in his 10th season. But, you know, one big piece of the puzzle that they've got to try to replace is Dennis West, and that's a big loss for the Owls as he graduated last year. I think the big question is on the uh, uh, Lady Owl team that uh, that Collins girl, does she get her <laughs> uh, does she get her uh, ability from her father or from her uncle? I, I hope better than both of us. Of course, they open Hall of Fame play at Clay County. Let's go ahead and look at Watertown. Of course, a lot of new coaches, as you can tell. Uh, Jeff Keller in his second season, assisted by Darren Brown, the uh, principal there at Watertown. Uh, and then Coach Kevin Honeycutt in his first season. Uh, of course, only four teams, Murphy, in the district, so you're automatically going to region play. You could be over during the regular right. season and still, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, mature and, and, and get that great effort, uh, you could actually go to the regional tournament with right. just a couple of wins. Right. Well, I was going to say, you could not win a game all year and then win uh, the region semi uh, quarterfinals and semifinals and, and get there. Of course, let's go ahead and look at the District 6 AA basketball teams. It's Cannon County, Smith County, Watertown, Westmoreland. Of course, Westmoreland lost some players, uh, but they maybe probably the preseason pick. Smith County lost three girls uh, from a year ago that were there uh, through their leading scores. Uh, and of course, Watertown, uh, Coach Keller really had them improve from a year ago. Doesn't, uh, excuse me for interrupting, doesn't Monterey join that group next year? I think that's correct. Of course, Jackson County is in. Uh, you know, it's going to Westmoreland's out, but you know, there's a different team, and we'll do a different show where we've got what the upcoming districts are, uh, which are remarkably different from what they currently are. Right. Uh, which we'll, you know, we'll do in a later show. Look at the uh, DeKalb County teams. Of course, under two first-year head coaches, Brandy Allen, uh, in her first season, uh, they were 15 and 14 a year ago. Of course, they lost their coach to, uh, I guess, went to Canny. No, I'm sorry, Warren County, I believe. Uh, and when you look at, you know, the success that they've had, and then Joey Agee, a very, very familiar uh, name. His brother uh, coaches over at the uh, middle school um, and had a lot of success. Of course, Joey uh, taking over for John Sanders. Um, you know, but when you look at DeKalb, you know, they are in a very tough district as we're gonna look as we turn the page uh, to looking at the seven AAA teams. Murphy, night in, night out, this is a brutal, brutal district. It is, a lot of uh, post-season, post-regular season experience uh, on the part of all of those teams right. up there. And uh, to be one of the top four, uh, you can't let your guard down any Tuesday or Friday night. You look at Upman, they finished third or fourth during the regular season and their girls, and uh, I'm sure Justin can tell you this, they won the state championship a year ago. Of course, he is a proud B alum. And uh, when you look at Cumberland County and DeKalb County, Livingston, Macon, Stone, Upman, and White County, of course, Macon County no longer under Larry White. But, you know, that's a very tough uh, 
district uh, for girls and boys basketball, especially girls. The vast majority of those teams have got uh, state tournament uh, experience on the resume. Of course, Macon County won a state championship, Livingston's won one. Uh, you know, Stone always makes a deep run. Uh, Upland has, White County has under uh, the girls as far as uh, Michael Dodging goes. But it uh, should be a great year in District 7, Triple A. We'll look at the uh, Huff and Puff Trucking Game of the Week, which is East Nashville at Smith County when we return. And we'll get Murphy's picks uh, for the uh, ball games upcoming, which will be the quarterfinals coming up on Friday night. As we remind you, you're watching the box score brought to you by Blackwell Realty and the Josh Kirby team on DTC3 Sports. What is your emergency? I think I'm being robbed. Sir? These big home security guys want way too much money from me. Let's connect you to a local company right away. It's a crime what big national companies charge for home security. For just $49.99, get a system with a touch keypad, three window or door sensors, motion detector, key fob, and standard installation. Help is on the way, sir. Oh, thank you. Switch now and save, call, or visit DTC Security online today. Don't be fooled. Vaping is just another way to deliver nicotine to your lungs. Learn the facts and escape the vape. We get it. Quitting is hard. But getting help is easy. Call the Tennessee Tobacco Quit Line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW for free counseling and cessation patches. Sign up for the free Tennessee Tobacco Quit Line program and let us help you quit for good. This project is funded under a grant contract with the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Nearstar Middle Tennessee Mines in Gordonsville is hiring. We have open positions for master, certified, and experienced heavy-duty maintenance techs, maintenance supervisor, entry-level and experienced miners and exploration infill drillers, grade operator, electricians, laboratory and metallurgical technician, senior metallurgist, and more. We offer competitive wages, excellent benefits, PTO, holiday pay, exceptional 401k, and lots more. Make the most of your future and your career. Join the excellent team at Nearstar Middle Tennessee Mines in Gordonsville. And welcome back to the box score for the final segment. And we've got the Huff and Puff Trucking Game of the Week. Of course, it will be tape delay. Uh, it will be coming up this Friday night. Uh, but then you'll see Tuesday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. And then Thursday, November 24th at 6.45. Uh, Wednesday at 1, Saturday at 7. Uh, Murphy, the first time these two teams met. Great ball game. The Owls win it 15-14. Uh, should be another head knocker uh, in the quarterfinals in Carthage uh, on Friday night. Yeah, and you know both teams are going to be ready. There's no no question about that. I think uh, I think we'll see a very well played game on both sides. Uh, both have plenty of talent. Both have a lot riding on this ball game. They still want to win this one and one more right. to get to Chattanooga. But uh, sometimes when one team barely gets past the other one, it's really, really hard to uh, to beat that same team twice. And both, and both Smith County and Gordonsville have uh, both got that same task. Uh, although Smith County did uh, knock off East Nashville, uh, Gordonsville's trying to get some revenge after that tough loss uh, to in County. Salina. You're looking at uh, East Literature, which was East Nashville before this. East Lit lost to Smith County. Then East Nashville won last year down in East Nashville. Then they played earlier in 15-14, so this is the fourth matchup between the two schools uh, meeting in Carthage in quarterfinal play on Friday night. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Murphy's uh, picks. Murphy, take it away. Well, those are all those that they've all got a chance to be fairly close. I think Fayetteville probably uh, maybe has the toughest assignment because uh, McKenzie's really good. They haven't lost this year either. Uh, and that'll be an interesting to want, one to watch, but I've got to go with Fayetteville. They've just put too many points on the board too many times. Uh, what, a week or two ago, they scored 60-something points in the first half. Right. So uh, they've, they've got some weapons for sure. I'm going with Fayetteville in that one. Oliver Springs and Cofield, they have met in the past as well. Uh, pretty one-sided game, and I look for Cofield to get an easy win in that one. Monterey and York, again, another rematch. This one's in Jamestown. Um, or well, York won that one, I think, by a couple of touchdowns. I've got to go with Monterey maybe in the upset. Uh, and then Dyersburg at Covington. 
Uh, Dyersburg has turf on its field, and I know they wish they were playing there, but they're not. And uh, Covington seems to have rebounded after losing their top player about three weeks ago. Still putting a lot of points on the scoreboard, so I got to go with Covington in that one. All right, let's go ahead and look at some uh, 4A, 5A, and 6A picks. We're going to start back uh, with a Chattanooga matchup, Murphy uh, Red Bank at East Hamilton. That's not far from each other. No, it's not at all. Uh, uh, Ted Blood, uh, not Bloodworth, Ted, oh, another senior moment, sorry. But the guy who used to be the coach at East Hamilton is now the head coach at Red Bank. And uh, I look for that to be a dandy game. East Hamilton won the regular season matchup, I think by a touchdown, maybe two. Uh, but I think Red, Bird, Red Bank kind of bounces back this, this week. Daniel Boone at Knoxville West. Knoxville West may be the best team in East Tennessee, regardless of classification. They have beat all comers and done so rather handsomely. So I've got to go with West in that one. Although Daniel Boone enters the game 12-0. Uh, Page and Nolansville, uh, those two teams will continue to stay at 5A next year. Uh, a great rivalry between those two. Nolansville, the newest school, I think they've only been in existence six years, maybe more. Uh, but they've, they've got some speed. Page does too. Uh, that one could go into overtime as well, but I think I saw Nolansville last week. I think they probably come away the winner. Page was in the finals last year. It's Nolansville's turn this year. And then Blackman at Oakland. Oakland's still the team to beat in Rutherford County, and I think they dispose of Blackman rather easily. Of course, Oakland lost uh, earlier in the year uh, to uh, CPA, a team that's still right. alive uh, in the playoffs in the private school sector. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, local picks. Uh, Murphy, a couple of rematches there from the uh, week 11, a regular season. Of course, Clay County gets the win 27-20 over Gordonsville. Gordonsville made three huge turnovers there in the third quarter. Uh, and, you know, when you look at Bruce Lamb and Mike Dickerson and Jimmy Maynard, what they've done, of course, Jimmy Maynard has never lost to a Gordonsville team. He's now 15-0. He was 14-0 uh, as the Owls head coach. Then he gets the win um, in week 11. 27-20, uh, should be a great game in Salon. No time like the present, right, right. <laughs> to drop one. <laughs> My heart says Gordonsville. I know uh, Steven Jackson will have that team fired up and ready to go. And uh, yeah, there's there's some pretty good coaches on that Clay County team, three, three with head coaching experience. But uh, I've still got to go with the Tigers in that one. Uh, it's just so incredibly great to have two the only two high schools in Smith County, and both of them are still playing in the third round. And I think Smith County, uh, wouldn't it be cool if Gordonsville and Smith County were both at, the, at state championships right. in Chattanooga? I think that would be awesome. So I got to pick Smith County and Gordonsville in those two games. You know, East Nashville, uh, when you look at Frank Gordon, an outstanding Class 3A finalist uh, for Mr. Football, I think they only targeted him three times, Murphy. He had two catches for minimal yardage. I really think they're going to try to get him more involved with jet sweeps, use their speed, and get to the wide side of the field or perimeter. Right. I, I'm not trying to tell Coach Jamal Stewart what to do. He's done an outstanding job with them. But I think – you know, they try to run between the tackles a lot. I look for them to try to get outside and use their speed more. You got to you got to go with who you took to the dance. And, right. and he had a big uh, role in making sure that East Nashville got through the regular season the way they did. I think you're probably right in that one. OK, and we'll uh, put the bow tie on this one as for Justin Malden and Murphy Fair. I'm Terry Collins. Good night from the box score.